Well, of course. Sure will. And it will show you some of its snow magic. And we'll have the most amazing holiday! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right! Blizzard has better things to do than entertain us. Hey! What are you doing? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Let us just see who will be laughing tomorrow when we win the Christmas Cup. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Winners. <laughs> As if they could win. We will roll you guys into the ice. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Children, you should be ashamed. Don't fight. All right, Martins. Let's go home. We need a nice sleep before tomorrow's victory. Tig, Spike is right. We also need to rest. What about Blizzard? Come on, you guys. We'll be okay. Christmas winners. I now declare the Christmas tournament open. <laughs> <laughs> Let the cup go to the most worthy. Show them how it's done. The beavers don't stand a chance. We're playing to five points. <laughs> we are very cool. Beavers always rule. Every kid knows what I mean. <laughs> Beavers go, go, go. Score a go, go, go. Done, guys. Hooray! And the team that makes the final is Leo and Tiggs. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all, Spotty. But you won't get so lucky when playing us. <laughs> First, you gotta win the game against the Lemmings. Right. See you in the finals. <laughs> See you later. Take this! Ugh. Miss me? Ugh. Miss me again! Ooh. Listen, why don't we go make our own snowman? That's right. That's right. When that blizzard will notice right away. Yeah, and then he'll show us snow magic. <laughs> <laughs>
Ones do play rather well. Yeah, if you're a runner-up. What's going on? Calm down. Let's run and see what's going on there. We still got time. What did you do that for, kid? We wanted to make a snowman for Blizzard so that we could see snow magic. If the snowball falls down, we won't see Blizzard or have a holiday. Yeah or have holiday magic either. <gasps> we could go up and carefully dismantle it. Leo, the Martins beat the Lemmings. Come on, if we don't show up, they'll count it as our defeat. But what about Blizzard? And what about the snow magic? Is holiday canceled? <sighs> All right, Leo. Let's, you know, save the holiday. Hooray! 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 Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the strike of a true champion. Well done, Leo. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! Thank you, children. You've saved the holiday. You know, I never thought I would say it, but I gotta say, you've played really awesome. Great job. Congratulations to you, Leo and Tig. <laughs> Why is he being so nice? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, let's have our celebration.
Because you, you took a shortcut. Hi, guys. I made a song, you know. You want to hear it? <laughs> a song? <laughs> Can you even Me sing? Mila, <laughs> let's play tag instead. <laughs> Tig is it. No, I'm not. Not anymore. Oh, just <laughs> you wait. <laughs> Winter tale. No, oh, King. Kids, today I will tell you a very old story I know about a bear and a magical song. Hear that, Mila? About a song. Right up your alley. <laughs> it happened a long time ago. There lived a bear who was very strong and kind taking care of the entire taiga and making sure everything was in order. But then winter came, bringing the blizzard with it. It howled and raged and covered the forest in a snowy blanket. All the animals hid in their burrows, and the bear grew sad and lonely. He wandered around the forest all by himself and bellowed in a terrible voice, disturbing everyone's sleep and scaring baby animals. Suddenly, a small bird flew over. It sat on a tree branch next to the bear and sang a song. It sang about winter ending and spring coming back about the sun warming up the earth again, about plants bursting into bloom and animals leaving their burrows to play. The bear listened to the song until he fell asleep. And ever since that time, as soon as winter comes, the bear climbs into his lair and sleeps there until... <sighs> Papa Pandiga, Spring. is it true that the bear sleeps with his paw in his mouth? Oh, uh, how am I supposed to know? There is no creature fearless enough to sniff around the bear's home. Tig, what do you think? Is it a front paw that the bears have in their mouth? Or a hind one? No, a front one. Hind paws are too far. But to know for sure, we gotta wait till Pandiga falls asleep. Why wait? We can take a peek at Bealzy and see everything. Leo, are you sure about that? There's nothing to be afraid of. I'll just take a peek and get out. Ah! Leo! Leo! <gasps> again if he listens to a lullaby. Can I be the one to sing? Be my guest. Go ahead and sing. Why don't you dance while you're at it? This is serious business here. When I was small, my mom used to tell me stories before bedtime. Bingo! A boring story. That's exactly what we need. It'll put him right to sleep. Leo, but how are we going to lure him in? Piece of cake. Snowball tree berries. Ha. He's coming. 
coming. In position, everyone. Dig. Do it. Magic Birdie. How should I grab him? Gently. Careful not to wake him up. Boy, it's heavy. Here goes. Hey, thanks, Mila, for having my back. <laughs> Come on. It's nothing. Yup, with his front paw in his mouth. Mila, why didn't you tell us you were such a great singer? My turn. Oh, sleep tight, baby bear. Rest your head, have no fear. Oh, come on. What's so funny? I'm not that bad. <laughs> like, like mole in his burrow, like, like fox in, in his hole. And, and afterwards, winter will bid you goodbye. And spring will arrive in the blink of an eye. The air so warm, but for now you should sleep. 
<laughs> and that's how a good song can make uh, <laughs> can make a miracle. An old friend. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, no, 11, here I'll be found 12, right away. 13, 14, 15, this won't work 16, either. 17, oh, so where should I hide? 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and I'm done counting. Ready or not, here I come. All right. Leo, here I come! Wow, this is a sweet hiding spot. Tiggle have to look for me till nightfall. <laughs> Leo, there you are. Cool. Let's do it again. Totally. <laughs> Leo, where'd you get this nest anyway? From a tree. <laughs> where else? But what if this nest belongs to somebody? Well, you know, the nest is empty. And if it's empty, it means it's abandoned. <laughs> Yeah, we're coming! Just a second! Tig, let's just put it away now and come back later for more riding. All right. Push it this way. You don't hurry. I'm gonna leave without you. <sighs> Mila, wait for us. Okay. So today, I'm going to tell you quite an amazing story. The sea waves when the wind above the sea waves when the wind above the sea waves starts to storm and rage. We will scare it off with shouts. Mama, who's that flying over there? The crows? <laughs> You're a crow, Mila. <laughs> they are eagles. Easy, easy, children. <laughs> Don't fight. Those are storks. They are coming back to their nests after the winter. Hey ho! Hey ho! Hey ho! We're going home, my friends. Friend. <laughs> it's so wonderful to see an old friend when you come back home. And who is that? Children, I want you to meet Theodore, an old friend of mine, a stork. Mr. Theodore, was it a difficult journey? Well, as they say in the far land of China, the journey to your family nest begins with a single wing stroke. You know what, children? I'm going to tell you the story of the stork. Go, oh, wow. I'd be happy to hear that, too. All right, then. Once upon a time, there lived a stork. Was he all alone? Yes, all alone. All by his lonesome in his giant nest. But then the stork decided to find himself a girlfriend. One day, high in the sky, right under the clouds, he saw a beautiful lady. Only it turned out that this beautiful lady is the daughter of the strongest wind who didn't want to share her with anyone. The wind came down, ooh, and pulled the stork's nest apart. But the stork wasn't about to give up. He built a new nest much stronger than the previous one. And that's when the wind realized that the stork is a worthy fiancé for his daughter, persistent and courageous. 
Ever since that time, storks come back to their nests every year, and the families they build last for their entire lives. Mr. Theodore, do you also have a girlfriend? Well, a stork with a nest has everything. You know what? Come visit me. It's close on the top of that hill. Tig, I have a bad feeling that the nest we found might have an owner after all. Really? And who is he? The nest is gone. What? What do you mean, gone? Completely gone! Maybe the wind blew it away. No wind could do that! It was the sturdiest nest in the entire taiga! Oh, no, no, no. My Theodora's gonna be here any minute. Oh, you haven't seen her angry. That's it, it's all over. Don't you worry, sir. We'll help you. Leo and I will find it in no time. Let's go, Tig. Leo, where's the nest? How should I know? It used to be here. Weird. It couldn't have just disappeared, could it? Stop. Do you hear that? <laughs> 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 Did you see the shorty fly out? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Let's push it up. Come on. Hurry up. Push. Push. <laughs> come on. Let's go. Uh, hey, you. Give us back our nest. Your nest? <laughs> hey, Martins, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. The spotty and the stripey make nests now. <laughs> I can't even believe it. It's not yours or ours, but the nest does have an owner. Give it back. <laughs> right. First, catch us if you can. <laughs> We're asking nicely. Give it back. <laughs> Tig, we're in so much trouble. Oh, no, no, no. Is this all that's left of my nest? No, no, no. Children, you should be ashamed. We didn't throw it down from the tree. They did. That's right. They did. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. Mappa, we were just playing hide and seek and then it fell down. I didn't mean to. And then we just thought that it had no owner. We are very sorry. Yeah. We're very sorry. Please forgive us. Wise men would say that there can only be a wrong path, but never a hopeless situation. But this is the end. Ah, oh, children, children. Mappa Pandiga, we're going to fix everything. Oh, listen, guys. I've got an idea. Is this one nest material? For the roof? Sure. And these? Just perfect. Put them there. OK. Right. Spike, let the spotty and the stripey do the work. That's right. What are we here for? Stop asking and start collecting. All right. A little more. OK, and one more. Good. Mila, you need to stop. It's already pretty. Tig, call him. OK. Ooh. It's done! Come and have a look! <laughs> the creeks bring more light, and following spring, I also came back! It's such a surprise. Hmm.
<laughs> well then, wanna race? The first one to that bush wins! Come on! Going on the count of three. One, two, three! Hey, wait! That's not fair! <laughs> I'm already fed up with this snow. Tig, it suits you. Spring is over, and it's still freezing. Uh-huh. I really miss all that sunshine, too. <laughs> and I miss the flowers. Come out, sunshine. Where did you go? <laughs> I'm sure it will come out just for you. There once was someone in the taiga who the sun listened to. <gasps> really? <gasps> How exciting. Tell us more, Mappa. Come along with me, kids. The Sun Folk. <laughs> Look at that! Awesome! Mappa, who are they? This is the Sun Folk. What kind of folk? Sun Folk. These animals lived in the taiga a long time ago. It is said that they descended from the sun itself. In cold times, when the sun used to stop giving warmth to the earth, they used to send the chosen one, the strongest and fastest one in their tribe, to talk to the forefather and ask him to turn up the heat. And the sun listened to him. But, Mama Pandiga, how did they talk to the sun? It's so high up. There is a valley of geysers behind the quick river and the big swamp. And in the valley lies the magical sunstone. They used it to communicate. Mappa, where are these sun folks right now? Nobody knows. Some say they left these parts a long time ago. But others believe that the sun folk is still among us. They just forgot about where they came from. There, look. To me, this chosen one looks like Leo, don't you think? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> He does! <laughs> <laughs> okay, kids. Let's get going. It's getting chilly. <laughs> Leo! Leo, stop sitting around. Come play tag with us. Tig, I still can't get the Sun Folk story out of my head. <laughs> Try to think on the run. It will warm you up a lot. Just listen for a sec. What if I, I mean, leopards are the Sun Folk? And I'm the Chosen One. You? The Chosen One? Why not? You said yourself that the one from the picture looks a lot like me. Well, he does. It means I have to go to the Valley of the Geysers and look for the Sunstone. Leo, it's very dangerous to go to the Valley. <laughs> Guys, come on, try to understand. If I am the Chosen One, I have to talk to the Sun. Otherwise, summer will never come. Whether you're the chosen one or not, this much, I know. We're not going to let you go alone. Yeah, Tig is right. We'll go with you. <laughs> no way. I'm not going to go in that water. Let me think. I'll come up with something. A raft? Wow, Cuba, you're a genius. Leo, what are you doing? Hop on the raft. You forget, Tig. I'm the chosen one. I have to find the sunstone by myself. I got 
got this, guys. <laughs> We finally made it to the big swamp. I'm sure that this whole swamp is already frozen or something. Whoa! Maybe not. Leo, where are you going? I'm jumping over it. Leo, that's crazy. Come with us. It is safer together. Don't be afraid, guys. I'm the chosen one. I totally got this. If this so-called sunstone does not exist, you're giving me a piggy ride back. Uh, 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 Leo, uh, you might want to be careful. Uh, it's okay. I can do this. I am the chosen one. It's okay when you use teamwork and avoid taking unnecessary risks. Coming? Yeah. You guys taking a nap? Let's go! <sighs> okay. Now Leo will crawl up to his hunk of rock, say hello to the sun, and then we can go home. Hey, guys! What about the geysers? What about the geyser schmeisers? They won't stop us. I didn't say that they were hot. <gasps> Whoa! The sunstone found it. <sighs> Leo, wait for us. Huh? Ow! <gasps> They're singeing my fur off. Ah, Leo, watch out! Jara, I'm the chosen one. I'll come up with something. <gasps> Leo, you tried hard, but you see, there's no way to get through. Let's forget about the stone. Let's go home, okay? Uh, guys, you go. I'll catch up later. Chosen one. I got this. I can do this. I'm sorry, Leo, but it seems even the chosen one can't do it by himself. But together, we got this. Come on, push! <laughs> <laughs>
together we just asked it nicely, and the sunshine came out. By the time we came back, everything already bloomed. Nicely done. It has indeed become much warmer. It was Leo's idea. <laughs> he suggested we go to the Sunstone. Thank you, friends. Without your help, I just couldn't have done it myself. Ah, kids. As they say, the one without friends is like a tree without roots. And always remember this. Two heads are better than one. 